in the 1930s, it seemed like everybody from the South knew everybody else from the South. The same went for a quaint town in Alabama. In the eyes of Scout, a sweet little girl who just started the first grade, and her big brother Jim, their little town was the quietest, calmest place on earth. But then again, even the best places can be affected by the horrors of Halloween, as we saw one night in To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. The night was still. I could hear his breath coming easily beside me. Occasionally, there was a sudden breeze that hit my bare legs, but that was all that remained of a promised windy night. This was the stillness before a thunderstorm. He listened. Her no dodges, then, I said. It's not that, Jim answered. I can hear it when we're walking along, but when we stop, I don't hear it. You hear my costume wrestling. Oh, it's just Halloween, gotcha. I said it more to convince myself than Jim. For sure enough, as we started walking again, I could hear what he was talking about. It wasn't my costume. Just old Cecil, Jim said presently. He won't get us again. Let's not let him think we're hurrying. We slowed to a crawl. I asked Jim how Cecil could follow us in this dark. Looked to me like he'd bump into us from behind. I can see you, Scout. How? I can't see you. Your fat streaks are showing. Miss Crenshaw painted him in with some of that shiny stuff so they'd show up under the footlights. I can see you pretty well, and I expect Cecil can see well enough to keep his distance. I would show Cecil we knew he was behind us, and we were ready for him. Cecil Jacobs' big red hand! I yelled suddenly, turning around. We stopped. There was no acknowledgement, save hand, bouncing off the distant schoolhouse wall. I'll get him, Jim said. Hey! Hey, 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 answered the schoolhouse wall. It was unlike Cecil to hold out for so long. Once he pulled a joke, he'd repeat it time and again. We should have been left out already. Jim signaled for me to stop again. He said softly, Scout, can you take that thing off? I think so, but I ain't got nothing under it much. I have your dress here. I can't get it on in the dark. Okay, he said. Never mind. Jim, are you afraid? No. Think wall is to the tree now. A few yards from that to the road. We can see the street light then. Jim spoke in an unhurried, flat, toneless voice. I wondered how long he would try to keep the Cecil myth going. You, uh, reckon you ought to sing, Jim? Mm-mm. Be real quiet again, Scout. We had not increased our pace. Jim knew as well as I that it was difficult to walk fast without stumping a toe, tripping on stones, or other inconveniences, and I was barefooted. Maybe it was the wind rustling the trees, but there wasn't any wind, and there weren't any trees except the big oak. Our company shuffled and dragged its feet as if wearing heavy shoes. Whoever it was wore thick cotton pants. What I thought were trees rustling was a soft swish of cotton on cotton with every step. I felt the sand go cold under my feet, and I knew we were near the big oak. Jem pressed my head. We stopped and listened. Shufflefoot had not stopped with us this time. His trousers swished softly and steadily. Then they stopped. He was running, running at us with no child steps. Run, Scout, run, run, Jim screamed. I took one giant step and found myself reeling, my arms useless in the dark. I could not keep my balance. Jim, Jim, help me, Jim! Something crushed the chicken wire around me. Metal ripped on metal, and I fell to the ground and rolled as far as I could, floundering to escape my wire prison. From somewhere nearby came scuffling, kicking sounds, sounds of shoes and flesh scraping dirt and roots. Something rolled against me, and I felt Jim. He was up like lightning and pulling me with him, but though my head and shoulders were free, I was so entangled that we didn't get very far. We were nearly to the road when I felt Jim's hand leave me, felt him jerk backwards to the ground. More scuffling. There was a dull crunching sound, and Jem screamed. <laughs>